Hey, my name is Marcus Burton, Director of Product Development with CWMP, here in this session to talk a little bit about Wi-Fi mobility. Uh, mobility is sort of the buzz phrase. Uh, I like to call it roaming, uh, so I'm going to call it roaming, but I wanted to put the buzz phrase up there because everyone refers to it as mobility. Um, so I'm going to talk about it as roaming. Now, the idea of Wi-Fi mobility or Wi-Fi roaming is that, you know, with any wireless technology, the primary benefit is you get mobility. Your clients can move around and continue to use their applications and devices that they use on these wireless networks. It's no different in Wi-Fi. The principles are unique to Wi-Fi, um, you know, or the, pr the principles that are unique to Wi-Fi are what we want to talk about here. So we have an access point here, and this circle represents its, its service area, you know, out to some, some sort of arbitrary signal strength. Um, and then we're going to give this access point a neighboring cell and then one neighboring uh, below it as well. So these are three access points. We'll call this channel 1, channel 6, and channel 11. We have a client that starts out over here on channel 6 and associates to, to this access point. And they're having their communications. And uh, at some point in that, in that exchange, uh, the user of this device is moving throughout the, uh, the physical environment and moves out of the service area of this access point on channel 6 and moves into the service area of this access point here on channel 1. Now one of the big questions that comes along with, with roaming in Wi-Fi is who makes the decision when the client moves from this access point to this access point? And the answer with the exception of one vendor is that the client makes that decision. And the client makes that decision based on some proprietary algorithm that determines that this access point's uh, signal quality or communications with that access point are no longer as good as it expects communications with this access point over here to be. So at that point, this access point decides, uh, and, and in most cases, this is going to be a multi-channel environment, so neighboring access points are going to be on non-overlapping channels like I've drawn here, 1, 6, and 11. So in order to roam, this client device has to cease communications with this access point. It can't continue communicating with that access point and then all of a sudden be communicating with this access point. It has to both know about this access point on channel 1 and decide that that access point is going to be better for communication. And then it has to leave channel 6 and it has to take up communications on channel 1. Now, as we've talked about in other videos and, and, and will cover in different sessions, uh, depending upon the security method that you're using, this roam uh, could take a short amount of time or it could take a long amount of time. But no matter what you're, what you're using as far as security goes, you always have to go through a certain process when you roam from one access point to another. If you remember the video that we did on the state machine, this access point always has to go through at least an open system authentication and an 802.11 association. I'll just abbreviate that one here. But it always has to do at least these two things. In any modern WPA network, whether it's a personal or enterprise network, it also will have to do the four-way handshake. And then if you're using WPA or WPA2 or enterprise with 802.1x EAP, it's also going to have to go through the full 802.1x EAP authentication. Now that introduces some new problems, which we'll cover in a separate uh, roaming vid video where we're, where we're discussing specifically mobility along with security. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I just want to illustrate that when this client decides to roam, it leaves this channel, it moves over to this new channel, it has to go through this process of uh, doing handshakes and, and sort of doing the 802.11 dance before its application data flow can continue to resume. So it's communicating here on channel 6 uh, with this access point. Its data flow is, is going, let's just call it a voice over Wi-Fi call. So you've got a phone call that's, that's going on here. The user is mobile throughout this, this environment. They move into the service area of a new access point. When this client decides that it's time to roam, the application data flow stops. So your voice over Wi-Fi call at that point stops. You're no, you're no longer passing frames until you've gone through all of these steps and can now begin passing frames through the new access point on the new channel. 
Now, in some cases, if it takes too long, your application will actually, you know, if, you're, if it's a sensitive session-based application, that session will terminate altogether. And when you run to the new access point, you're going to have to start a new session. You have to manually start the phone call over again. Or it may just be, you know, if it's a short roam, uh, if it happens very quickly and efficiently, you might notice a little click. It may be imperceptible to the user altogether. Um, but it's an interesting issue to illustrate here that both the client makes the decision and the application flow stops as soon as it makes that decision and switches to the new channel. So those are some of the basics about Wi-Fi mobility or Wi-Fi roaming, uh, as you'll often hear it called. And again, my name is Marcus Burton. Feel free to visit CWMP.com for more information and more videos. Thanks for watching.